Hey, how's it going? This is Melinda and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video about records that have surprisingly went up in value in my record collection. I did a video like this a couple weeks ago and I will leave a link below. But first I want to real quickly do a video um, showing my new box set that I just received. It is the Beatles Abbey Road 3LP Anniversary Edition box set. And I'll go ahead and get started. First off, it just came in this shrink wrap with this hype sticker. Here is the box. It looks just like the studio album cover that we're so used to seeing. And here's this. So anyway, I really do love the box. All three of the LPs look exactly the same. They come in these uh, black lined sleeves. And they're on this iconic Apple label. Let me try to not have the glare here. And they're all 180 gram vinyl. The studio album for Abbey Road came in this sleeve. And the um, this is a picture from the Abbey Road photo sessions. It's an outtake. And so I thought it was really cool that they put the two LP sessions uh, outtakes in an outtake cover. So I thought that was really cool. And uh, I just want to just put in my little personal opinion in here. Uh, anytime I've ever seen these Abbey Road photo sessions, and especially this cover, they all look great and I love seeing all of them. But I've just always thought John Lennon was the standout. He just looks so cool leading the way in that cool white suit. I've just always loved these pictures of John Lennon on here. I don't use the phrase like a boss, but he just looks like the epitome of cool. Here he is with the wind blowing in his hair. Anyway, that's just always been my observation about that Abbey Road cover that I've always loved. Here is the pamphlet that comes with it, and it's really, really good information. It shows a, a Paul McCartney wrote a wonderful reflection about Abbey Road on here, as well as Giles Martin wrote a personal note too, and I really enjoyed reading those. There's some pictures in here along with a lot of information about the studio outtakes. And I really do enjoy these studio outtakes. I'm really glad I purchased the L 3LP set. I love hearing John, for example, singing Come Together and he hasn't quite figured out how he wants it to sound yet. I also love hearing George singing uh, something and uh, Here Comes the Sun and just really fresh different takes. And the studio session outtakes sound incredible. They do not sound like bootlegs, they sound amazing. So I was really pleased with, with those. And now I wanna just discuss how I feel this new and latest Giles Martin release of Abbey Road sounds in comparison to other Abbey Road sound uh, records that I have. Here's the original master recording that I have of it. Uh, this has been my go-to for a really long time. I have a Japanese press of Abbey Road. I have a U.S. First Press, as well as a limited edition one from the 90s. And I think all of them sound really good. Uh, you know, and I just got new speakers, so everything is a new experience for me. So I did listen to, this was my go-to Abbey Road. I've listened to that, that one again. And how do I think this new one stacks up against my others? Um, this is my new go-to. I think it sounds great. I'm really impressed. Uh, has it exceeded my expectations? No, it hasn't exceeded my expectations, but I had very, very high expectations because I loved the version of Sgt. Pepper that Giles Martin did, as well as the White Album. I thought they sounded fantastic, and I had all the hopes that this was going to sound fantastic too, and it does. So I'm very pleased. I really do think Ringo's drums are punchier on here. Their voices sound better. I've never heard a more beautiful version of Golden Slumbers. And uh, just everything does sound really great on it. I think they got it right and I've really been pleased. So anyway, I just wanted to show that and now on to the rest of the video. And now I'm gonna show you some records that have surprisingly gone up in value in my record collection. And I'll just start by saying that I buy records to listen to and enjoy. I've never sold a record out of my collection. And for today's discussion, I did use Discogs as my primary source. It is not the end all or be all 
of what a record is worth. It is a tool and there are other ways you can determine values of a record. The bottom line is a record is worth what someone is willing to pay for it. And with that said, I'll go ahead and get started. This is George Harrison's All Things Must Pass. This is a record that I picked up very early in my vinyl collecting. I really love it. A lot of people consider it to be the best or one of the best solo albums that one of the former Beatles made after the Beatles broke up. It's a really great record and I have noticed that in record stores it's gone up in value and in, at Discogs it has gone up in value as well. It has sold for as, on average about $85. It has sold for as high as $113. So the value for this one has gone up. I've seen in record stores and on Discogs. So I'm really happy that I picked mine up when I did because I didn't pay anywhere near those prices. And I still think if you shop around at record stores, you can find them for less money. Here is one that I picked up at the end of last Christmas. This is Ray Charles' The Spirit of Christmas. I believe a lot of people are wanting this album now because of the popularity of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. There are a couple songs on here that are featured in that movie and I think it's just become a tradition for a lot of people and they want this album. And it is a really great Christmas record. And I bought this one. This is a gold stamp promo that's numbered. I don't believe gold stamp promos. Uh, create a much higher value than a regular album. I think you have to have a white label promo to really uh, have one go up in value. This has gone up in value and sold the median price $70. It has gone for as much as $80. I didn't pay anywhere near that. I'm so glad that I found it when I did and this is a really great record and uh, surprisingly valuable. This is Aerosmith's Nine Lives. This is the 2010 Music on Vinyl. Uh, and I found this for about $20 last summer. And I was really surprised when I put it into Discogs how much it is selling for. It has gone up for um, the average $76. Uh, it has gone for as high as $105. And anyway, I think the price might simmer down a little bit now. I believe there has been a reissue of this record now that you can go and buy in stores and order. So I believe the price of this particular copy is probably going to go down a little bit. Although I still think this is going to retain some value because it's from music on vinyl and they have a great reputation for great sounding records and this does sound really great. I'm very happy to have the copy of it that I have for the price I paid. I was very surprised to know how much it's gone for. This is Keith Whitley's Don't Close Your Eyes. This is from 1988. It is a country album. I really love Keith Whitley's voice and I'm a big fan. And this record has um, gone for a lot of money. Um, I was really surprised because a lot of the um, 80s country albums really have not gone up in value, but for some reason this one has. Uh, it has gone from uh, the median price, $88. It has sold for as high as $244. You know, I just throw that number out there. For, uh, I don't really believe there's any uh, validity to why one would cost that much unless it was autographed by Keith Whitley. Maybe that would cause it to be that expensive. It's a great album. I didn't pay very much for my copy. I think mine was about $14. Uh, but I have seen it at record stores and on Discogs. It has gone for quite a bit of money. Like I said, $88. So anyway, very happy to have that one in the collection for uh, very little money. This is a record that I ordered uh, September of 2018. I ordered it off of Paul McCartney's website. It's Paul McCartney's Egypt Station. This is a special edition of it. It's a trifold that did not, uh, a lot of the albums didn't come in this with this trifold. It was just a standard album cover. And this particular copy was an orange and blue vinyl variation. There were several different ones that came out. I believe Barnes and Nobles had a red vinyl edition and uh, what was the other? Spotify had a green vinyl edition and there's of course the black uh, edition. So anyway, very happy that I picked this one up. I just really love the orange and the blue. They do sound fantastic 
and this record um, for a while was out of print causing this uh, to go up in value on average this one was going for $88 it went for as high as 129 at some point I do believe now if you go online you can find this again um, for the regular price but as those sell out this uh, this copy will you know retain a higher value than what I paid for it and I'm really glad of that it's a great album I really love it and I loved having the colored vinyl version this is a record that I bought for Record Store Day 2018 it is the Blue Oyster Cult Rarities Volume 2 I paid it's probably about a $35 2 LP record that I bought at Record Store Day it now goes on average for 46 it has gone for as high as 60 I really wanted to show this record to bring to your attention this one is rarities volume 2 but if you have rarities volume 1 it has gone up in value tremendously so if you have that one check it out I just really wanted to show this one to point out the uh, the uh, value of the rarities volume 1 and hopefully this one's going to continue to go up uh, it's just a really great record that I really enjoy listening to. This record is one that I found and picked up for about 12 bucks. Uh, it's just, you know, what I considered a standard record like Van Halen or Quiet Riot or one of those. But when I got it home and put it on Discogs, I realized that it is um, pr uh, more valuable than what I paid for it. The median price is about $40. The high it has sold for is $68 and come to find out this version is actually that was an early copy of it I assume they got some complaints about it and they changed the cover where the lady is not as exposed she's more in the water so also there is a major problem with the label on this one and I'll show you uh, side one all of the times uh, of the songs say two minutes and 22 seconds which is a major flaw and also on side two every song is recorded at being seven minutes and 14 seconds so this label had a couple of uh, mistakes made on it and also the cover is the original that they quickly changed out after receiving complaints so I believe maybe that has uh, some reason for why this particular record has gone up in value and I just know that when I saw it and I a friend of mine had the cassette I really never seen the cover for it I just recognized the songs and really liked it so I picked it up and I didn't pay very much for it I think like $12 so I was really surprised to see the average being 40 uh, as high as $68 for that great white hooked album this is Duran Duran. This is As the Lights Go Down. This was also a record store day record that we just I just picked up this past April. And it's on pink and blue vinyl, really pretty. And uh, anyway, this is about a $35 record just from a few months ago. And it's a rare one from Duran Duran. It was a concert that they did back in 1984 at the Oakland Coliseum in California. And I think it was a limited edition, and I think it was the only time it's been available on vinyl. So a lot of Duran Duran fans were after it for Record Store Day, and unfortunately there were limited copies at each store. So on the medium price of this is uh, $56. It has gone for as high as $74. So for something that I just purchased a few months ago to already be worth a little bit more um, is really special and I'm really glad I got this record because I really do enjoy it. This record was a kind of a blind buy. I didn't really know much about it. I was at a record store and uh, doing some shopping. I had a big stack of records to buy and they were playing this and I asked if I could buy it. I just really love the music of it. It's Rodriguez Cult Fact. It came out in 1970 it bombed here in the US it didn't sell very well but it took off and did very very well in South Africa and this is a South African press of it and anyway it was um, I did see it did have a pretty high price on the sticker but because I was buying so many records they cut me a really great deal on it and I'm so glad they did this is a good album it's on this AM records the sus and it says Sussex on it Anyway, it is a really great record and it has really went up in value. 
Uh, on average, it has uh, the median price on it is $120.30 and it's gone for as high as $302. So anyway, this is a pretty cool record. Uh, it actually also inspired a 2012 documentary calling Searching for Sugar Man and uh, won an Academy Award. Uh, it was uh, based on them searching for him and finding him and letting him know what a famous guy he was in South Africa. So anyway, just a really cool documentary and a cool story and this is a really good record. Here are a couple records that uh, are 45s. I want to really focus here on As Tears Go By. Uh, for one, when I've been looking for Rolling Stone records for my jukebox, it is very hard to find any early Stones records that are in playable condition. They're usually pretty trashed. But this is a really good one in a really great sleeve. It has sold on average for about $22. It's gone for as high as $110. I have no idea why it would be that much. but. Uh, usually, if you go to certain record stores, they get these 45s in and um, they just price them at the median price. And a lot of times the average price is based on having a generic sleeve. But if you can find one that has a really great sleeve like this one, it's worth tremendously more. And that was the case with this record. I was able to buy it for a really low price, um, but because it does have the original um, cover, in really good condition, it is worth a lot more. Same with this Painted Black by Rolling Stones. So very happy to have those. I will not be putting those in my jukebox. Uh, like I said though, it is very hard to find really good early Stones 45s in good condition. And finally, I'm going to show this Credence Clearwater Revival. This was a 2009 box set that I picked up last summer for $30. Thought it was a good buy, and turns out it was. Uh, on average, on eBay, they're asking $90 for this. Uh, Amazon, the starting price is $142. And on Discogs, it's gone for $51, and as high as $87. It's just a nice little box set with a lot of their great hits on it. They're all in really great condition. Really love it. So anyway, very happy to pay $30 for a box set knowing it's worth a lot more. And that is my video for the week. Please leave comments and uh, I love having discussions with each and every one of you. And subscribe to my channel. Take care. Bye-bye.